Day 11. Time. Approximately 6 p.m. Location. Ivory Tower, Big 52, at C Branch. Ivory Tower was a complex of large white structures protected by reinforced ceramic plates. Before the war, the place had been a research and development facility, where the ministries of morale and peace worked together for a non-war-oriented uses of the technology breakthroughs of the ministries of arcane science and wartime technology. Nowadays, Ivory Tower was the only settlement on the Big 52, controlled by the Steel Rangers. Mostly because it was the only place where you could find technology that hadn't been produced by Solaris Inc. And no pony with half a brain wanted to be near something made by Solaris Inc. Yes, Solaris Inc. Those guys that merged a radio and a vacuum cleaner, creating the first sonic weapon ever and putting it in the house, hooves of really confused housemaids. They also invented a doorbell that incorporated a thief detection and disposal talisman, successfully electrocuting more than 60 door-to-door -door sales ponies and a whole platoon of Philly scouts selling muffins. The central area of the white buildings was surrounded by a moat with a perimeter fence, defended with automatic turrets and minefields. For more than a century, the place held against every form of invader, from raiders to organized warbands. Today, the defenses were looking rather sorry for themselves. The turrets were destroyed, and the minefields depleted. Even the perimeter fence had sustained heavy damage, between having been cut in places. The moat that crossed by two bridges, on the north and west sides of the complex, there were two small collections of shacks located, mostly warehouses for caravans and places where the traveling ponies could stay the night and conduct business with the rangers with a hoof above their heads. The northern settlement had been almost completely razed, and the debris was used to build a barricade on the wasteland side of the northern bridge, while the western group of buildings, which had been built around a couple of pre-war structures, had been hastily fortified, featuring a pole with the flopping banner of the Applejack's rangers. The little fort was guarded by a dozen ponies, some of them still in their teens and wearing light combat saddles. A couple of fully-fledged steel rangers in their typical power armor were guarding the bridge itself, while a third was patrolling the rocky area surrounding Ivory Tower, followed by a couple of recruits. A fourth ranger was inside the HQ, arguing with a young mercenary. Yeah, I can do that, no problem at all. But I want half the caps now, and some plasma stuff. Henrietta stretched her arms and reclined the chair, putting her feet up on the old desk. The paladin cocked her head with a horrified expression on her muzzle. What do I look like, a garage sale? I'll give you a power lance, and that's already worth a fortune. But only when you're finished with the work. Henrietta snickered and shook her head. I'm a gunslinger. Don't offer me your fancy melee stuff. Three plasma grenades, now. And then one later. Toss in a couple of EMP mines, and I'm your griffin. Two EMP grenades now, a plasma grenade, and a plasma mine, later. Last offer. The pony stretched her hoof towards the griffin. Henrietta shrugged and shook the pony's leg. Deal. And half the caps now. So you can fly away with them? I don't think so. You won't need them until you're done in any case. The griffin sighed. You know what I think. I think that you don't have the caps. You hope that I'll accept and do the work for you, so that you can try and assault on the fort and then pay me with the caps that are inside the base. I don't think that I want to play this game on the hope that four rangers and fifteen recruits will succeed in an assault against half a dozen better trained and heavily equipped ponies backed by sentries and behind a solid defensive position. The paladin raised a hoof. All right, all right, you damned bloodwing. Half the caps now, but don't expect any gratitude. The young griffin shrugged again. Gratitude doesn't buy bullets. I guess we have a deal. I'll move very soon. Be sure that your guys don't screw up. All right. 
When you are finished, come back here and talk with my scribe, Melon. If you want to participate in the assault, I could have a little extra for you. Maybe some scavenged equipment. Henrietta was about to reply, when the pony in front of her held up a hoof, asking her to wait for a moment. The conversation was interrupted by an emergency call for the Steel Ranger Paladin. Cold shower copy. Report. The pony lowered her voice, but the griffins have good hearing. Henrietta sat in front of the desk, yawning. This wasn't her business, and she could drift away already, waiting for night. But that thing about getting scavenged weapons from Dead Steel Rangers seemed too good to be true. These ponies had to be really desperate if they made an offer like that to a griffin. Repeat that last part, please. You shot it dead how many times? The paladin's voice betrayed her disbelief. I don't think you can kill something more than once, Goss. Henry couldn't help but turn her head towards the pony talking in the helmet. But Cold Shower was now ignoring the mercenary, immersed in her new conversation. What exactly do you mean by that? Are you at least sure that it's hostile? The paladin paused for a moment. So, basically, you shot it because it was creepy and it didn't even return fire. The griffin jumped to her feet in alarm. Hey! Tell your guys to stop teasing puppy! Day 11. Time, approximately. 6.30 p.m. Location. Ivory Tower, Big 52, SC Branch. The filly in yellow trot up to the small fort, looking at the rusty barricades and the guards on the perches. Hi, pretty ponies. I'm Puppy Smiles. Have you seen my mom? The glares that Puppy received in response to her greeting were mostly those of weathered ponies, tired from days of restless guard duties and broken by the awareness that they were not fighting some raiders or slavers, but ponies that they had once thought of as brothers or teachers. No, the filly couldn't find benevolence among this herd. Bobby shrugged and kept narrating her interesting story to her escort. So, when Robocolt was sent away by the mayor, he decided to save the city all the same, because, you know, Robocolt wasn't just a robot, he was also a super kind pony. As usual, the filly didn't notice the general mood. I was already showering the poor patrol with her personal idea of what a pony with metal armor should do. But at that point, Mom found me watching the movie and she turned off the TV. The filly shrugged. Meh. I can't see why she doesn't want me to watch cool movies. I mean, Robocolt's the good one. It's so obvious, in the end he'll win. Paladin Goss sighed in frustration, his helmet open. Yeah, sure. But I'm not this robocult you're talking about. I'm an Applejack Ranger. It's different. Puppy giggled. You're funny, Mr. Not Robocult. I like you. Whatever. Please at least put away that dead Parador. It's disgusting. The filly had her pet sitting on her back. If the average pony would fear and hate such a dangerous predator, no pony could feel anything other than pity for that poor puny creature who was missing half its leg and wing. Still, the foal treated it like a treasure. Ew. Puppy frowned. But Fuzzyball wants to see the pretty ponies. She'll behave, I swear. The paladin face hoofed. I'm sure she'll behave. But, uh, there are pet eaters around. It could be dangerous. The paladin felt guilty, trying to sell the foal such an evident lie. Pet eaters? Where? Oh no, Fuzzy's in danger! The foal put the carcass of the little parador inside her saddlebags and started scouring the area in concern. Stay inside the bag. I'll take care of them. Goss's draw fell. He was trying to say something when one of the acolytes, who had been accompanying them, started laughing like an idiot followed by the other two. Puppy stared at the laughing trio, seemingly clueless about what was going on. <laughs> Very funny. Evidently, she didn't suspect anything. Goss looked away, trying to be as serious as possible. Right. You can never be too cautious enough with those pet eaters around. Now, 
Follow me to the leader. And you three, stop laughing like fools and report for duty at the front gates. The paladin trod away from the small group of acolytes, followed by Puppy. Okie dokie, not Robocult. When are we going to fight crime? For the last time, my name is Goss. Paladin Goss. The stallion sighed. This is why I hope I never have foals. The duo finally arrived at the HQ. The stallion opened the door, letting Puppy in before following her. The building was once a school, but now it was mostly collapsed, and all that was left were a couple of rooms and corridors that ended in small offices, with white walls and a single desk in the middle. Sitting at the desk was none other than the pony in metal armor and Henrietta. Henry! The foal launched herself through the room, charging at the griffin, who effortlessly dodged the hug and caught puppy smiles just behind the neck. Puppy struggled for a moment, trying to locate her friend. Hey, where are you? See, I told you we were gonna meet again. Still heading south. The griffin put puppy down and patted her on the helmet, snickering. So, paladin, this is a friend of mine. Can you keep an eye on her while I'm doing my job? Cold shower tilted her head, looking a little puzzled at the filly. This pony was shot four times, and not only does she not show any signs of that, but she's also in a good mood. I don't think I can accept her in this place until I know what I'm looking at. Goss? Call scribe scold? Bubby didn't care very much about the paladins. Now she had Henry, and this was way better. Yep. Mom is somewhere in the White Houses on the other side of the bridge. I was going there, and I met these pretty ponies and not Mr. Robocult. The foal finally succeeded in hugging the griffin. I'm so happy to see you again. Tell me you won't leave me alone this time. Henrietta cleared her voice, looking away from the filly. Uh, actually, I have a couple of things to do. But I'll be back if you wait for me here. It won't take long. Puppy frowned for a moment, asking uncertainly, Ah, uh, will you take Silky Tail with you too? Silky who? Ah, the doll. Yeah, sure. Why not? The filly sighed in relief. No, that's all right. Just let her help you. She's good. The griffin patted Puppy on the helmet. Cool. Now, stay here with the rangers and behave. Don't make them mad and don't run away. When I'm back, I'll let you hang with me, all right? Yeah! Puppy waved goodbye to Henry as she left the room, curious to see what was going to happen next. Time. A day 11. Time approximately 7 p.m. Location. Ivory Tower, Big 52, at C Branch. Scribe Scold was an old pony who had trained many acolytes over the years. His cruelty and coldness towards every pony made him infamous among the young recruits. There was only one way to gain the old scribe's respect, and that was by doing a perfect job every time. When he turned against the Steel Rangers, joining the Applejacks, every pony had been surprised by his choice. In fact, a lot of acolytes were still thinking that he was a spy. Scold approached Puppy and looked into her eyes while talking with Paladin Coldshower. Canterlot ghouls have some scars, as usual ghouls. I don't think that she's one of them. The Paladin sighed, sitting behind her desk. Then what could this foal be? She survived four direct hits. One in the head and three in the heart. Can I have a red cape too? With these words, Puppy grabbed Scold's attention and looked at it in amazement. I like the golden thingies. Gold is pretty Princess Celestia's color. When I'm a big pony, I want to be a princess too. But I need the gold. Please? Runes. The runes. And you can't have it. Now sit down and behave. The scribe turned back to the paladin. It could be something necromantic. I'm almost sure of that. If we had access to the library, I could do some research, but at the moment, I can only guess. Why can't I has, uh, have it? I can give you something in exchange. It's a barter. It's cool. Big ponies do barters every time, and it's okay. Not like when I changed my breakfast with two marbles and then was really hungry and Mom scolded me. It's okay. The paladin nodded, trying to ignore puppy smiles. 
So, what's your guess? Scold gave a stern look at the foal. No, I don't intend to barter my cape with you. Now behave and wait until the big ponies are done talking. The scribe sighed before going back to cold shower. I remember reading something about these rad suits. They are less effective than uh, normal ones during the Cantalot attack, and almost every fool wearing them was turned into a ghoul. Skold paused for a moment, looking at the filly still trying to pull off his cape. Not this one, I'd say. Maybe I should run a diagnostic test on the suit to see what comes out. The old scribe connected his pip buck to the data socketed on Puppy's suit, keeping the foal still with the other leg. Now, please stay still for a couple of minutes. Can I hug you? You're funny. I like you. Puppy paused for a moment, pondering. And I like your cape. Did I say that? Cold shower couldn't help but chuckle, despite the situation. This one, a grim glare from the scribe. Yes, you can hug me, as long as you stay still. Now, let's see what we have here. Scold frowned. It says she's deceased. No heartbeat, no body temperature. Actually, no body at all. Just 2,000 bone fragments and about 180 grams of organic matter. No, definitely not a ghoul. Heh <laughs> Red cape talks funny. Yeah. Scold, stop talking funny and give me a version for the troops. Since you are rejected the application as scribe by more into guns than scholarship. There was no bad blood in Cold's words, but the scribe occasionally needed some opponent to remind him that he wasn't in his classroom. I still don't know. I can say what she isn't. Scold looked back at his pip buck, reading the results of his analysis. The artificial intelligence of this suit is intact and working perfectly, so I'm pretty sure this is not a crazed robot. Oh, look at this. The main healing talisman failed 200 years ago, during a reboot. A one in a thousand chance. Probably caused by a failed short circuit or a flawed component. This activated the backup talisman. Cold shower raised an eyebrow. Ah, uh, and why should this be interesting? The scribe snickered. Because the backup healing talisman had a different function than the main healing talisman. The paladin snorted. Yeah, give me your information a bit at a time. Do you want to finish this thing, or are we going to have to wait until the morning? Scold sighed, ignoring the paladin's comment. This thing doesn't seem to contain a single healing spell. Just a program to manage and inoculate potions from the suit's stash. No, wait. There's something else, but I don't recognize this matrix. It uses... Zebra runes? What in the hay could zebra runes be doing inside of a healing talisman? Actually, the two ponies had the answer right in front of their muzzles, gently tugging at the scribe's cape. Cold sighed and muttered, Ah, uh, they could, uh, save 180 grams of organic matter. The scribe kept working with his pip buck. Yes, a partially decomposed heart, I'd say. This is interesting. Scanning the inside of the suit, I can see a couple of deformed high-caliber bullets in the heart's proximity, as if they hit it without damaging the organ. Gold pondered for a moment. Let me see if I can access the registry of the talisman. Then I can see how it was supposed to work. All this talk was plain boring. Puppy was a notoriously patient filly, but not even the most patient pony in Equestria would be able to stand all this blah blah blah. So the filly in yellow put her hooves in the scribe's pockets and started browsing through his possessions. A quill, some paper, a book, a pair of glasses, a snap, uh, <clears throat> a monocle, another monocle. Hey, what's this? Puppy took a brushable plastic pony out of Scold's pocket. It was green and white unicorn with a broad smile, and a liar as a cutie mark. Ah, it's so cute. The filly started petting the doll's mane. Brushy, 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 bru- What the- Hey, give her back! The scribe snapped the doll from Puppy's hooves, putting it back in his pocket. 
Play with your own dolls. This is an action figure, and it's very delicate, and... Skuld met Cold Shower's eyes, and he realized what had happened. No! No! No, 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 no! It's... it's a toy I confiscated from Acolyte! It's not mine! Puppy's eyes widened as soon as she heard that the doll hadn't a proprietor. Not yours? I can have it then. I love her and pet her and I'll make her tea and we'll always play together and we'll be the best of friends forever. I'm calling her Bon Bon. And I'll make her main pink. Skull's composure evaporated when he heard about dying the doll's mane. Her name is Lyra and you can't has her. It's my... <clears throat> I confiscated material needs to be scheduled and classified. An amused evil grin appeared on the paladin's muzzle as she walked around the desk and trotted towards the duo. Oh, don't be so strict, scribe scold. I'm sure that we can let a little filly play with a fool's toy, right? Cold Shower was smiling wildly, but she would have needed an even more teeth to really show just how much fun she was having right now. See? See? Robocolt says I can has it. Gimme, gimme, gimme. The fool tried to pick Scold's pocket again. But this time the scribe was on edge and blocked her. It's mine, okay? Lyra is mine. I can't give her to you because I like her. Are you happy now? You, ah. Uh. The scribe's expression changed when he looked at Cold Shower. After all, safety was mutual destruction could be an option. You can have a toy from the paladin's room, if you wish. She'd be very happy to let you rummage in her quarters, because I'm sure she has nothing embarrassing to hide. Am I right, paladin robocult? Shower's smile died as she quickly coughed and looked away. <coughs> I'm sure we'll find some pretty toys for you, little one. Now, uh, please behave and stay put while the scribe finishes his work. Puppy smiled in glee. A promise of new toys was good enough to make her let this pony finish checking her. Okie dokie! Scold sighed, and launched his last accusing glare at the paladin. Could you please stop grinning like that? I'm trying to focus here. The scribe went back to his instruments, mumbling. Ah, please, you're kidding me. They couldn't include such a feature in a healing talisman. Cold Shower looked up at Scold. What did you find? Is it as bad as it seems from your face? I... I'd say it's worse. Some pony at the Ministry of Peace went to extreme lengths to make sure these fools didn't die. That they weren't allowed to die. Weren't allowed? What do you mean by weren't allowed? The paladin raised an eyebrow. I mean that the last resort of the backup talisman consisted of some sort of necromantic spell. I'm not sure how it works, but it seems to bind a life to the patient, so towards left of her. The old scribe sighed. Luckily enough, it doesn't seem too powerful a spell. I think it could be undone, but it will take a lot of time and study. Moreover, it will require way more magical power than just my own. And I need my library. Cold Shower whistled. Talk about tough love. How could some pony do something like that? Forbidding you to die? Is it even possible? Objected the mayor. Since we're facing it, I'd say it is. I'm not an expert on necromancy myself, but I can tell that the talisman itself isn't in great condition. It stayed active for 200 years with a single spark of energy. I can't explain it. It shouldn't work at all. There must be something else, an, an external factor, maybe. The paladin tilted her head. So basically, the foal is some sort of ghost? Skull tapped his chin. I'm not sure. I need to study the phenomenon a little longer. I think that the talisman somehow linked everything together. The suit, the pink goo inside it, and all the remnants of the foal's body. A ghost? I don't think so. But I couldn't say it. Technically, this poor creature shouldn't be even capable of walking around. Its magic isn't strong enough. Instead, she behaves like a fool, has memories, and acts as if everything about her was normal. The old scribe paused for a moment, rubbing his eyes. Look at this log. 
The suit went almost dead and didn't move for two centuries. Then all of a sudden, its batteries got changed way above their maximum capacity, and every spell inside the suit began working at five times their effective potential. I can't explain this with science nor magic. Maybe she's a pony geist. With a very tired expression on his muzzle, Scold snickered and let go of Puppy's hoof. All right, we're finished here, little one. Puppy smiled back at the scribe and replied, Yay, now I can go find my mom. But I'll be back for the toys. Bye-bye. Day 11. Time approximately. 7.45 p.m. Location. Every Tower, Big 52, SC Branch. Puppy pouted, looking at the closed doors. But I have to go find my mom. I can't stay here. They fully banged the door, but no pony answered her. She was trapped inside the classroom. Those stupid robo-colts and put the filly in the room, luring her with the promise of toys, and now she was sitting in some sort of kindergarten, prisoner of these meanie ponies. Well, they actually gave her some dolls, and a lot of crayons, and even a super nice-looking coloring book. But she had no time for this. She had to find her... Oh! Look, this picture has butterflies! No, puppy. You must resist. You have... to... find... Ah! A golden crayon! It's actually the color of gold! I can color pretty Princess Celestia with this, and she'll be super identical to the real one! No. Mom comes first. Puppy was the filly on a mission. The foal put down the super cool crayons and looked away. These fancy things won't keep her down. Never. Is that... a real teapot? With... real teacups? Puppy lost her battle. Not even five minutes later, the situation was critical again. Miss Fuzzyball ruined Rarity's gala dress. And if they don't find a gold crayon, the whole gala will be spoiled. But look! Here comes pretty Princess Celestia with a golden crayon. And there is Rainbow Dash too. The gala saved. Yay! Now it was time to celebrate with a good cup of tea. Puppy was moving the dead Parador and some other dolls around, talking to herself with a very focused expression on her muzzle. It was clear that she couldn't be distracted. The gala was completely depending upon that tea party. Scold moved away from the window, shrugging. It seems that she won't be a problem. Keep a couple of acolytes at the door, just in case something happens, and get back to tonight's assault preparations. Cold Shower shivered, following the scribe. She seems so oblivious. What should we do with her? It doesn't seem right to keep a prisoner like that. Sooner or later, she'll try to go and find her mother again. The old pony sighed. I think I can dispel her curse. The spell is weak enough, but I must study the ritual, and I'll need some other unicorns. But, will she die? The concern in the paladin's voice was evident. Skull replied slowly, taking del talking deliberately as if he tried to explain the very easy but vital concept to a simple mind. She is already dead. Cold. That little pony deserves her eternal rest. She shouldn't even exist. But she doesn't seem to care. She could at least try to see if her mother's still alive. Maybe she's a ghoul. If she lived here, there could be information about her in the library. The scribe shrugged. Which brings us back to our original problem. Getting back to my library. So, put a couple of acolytes guarding the room and start the preparations for tonight. When I have the instruments, we'll discuss how to solve this problem. Day 11. Time, approximately 10 p.m. Location, Ivory Tower, Big 52, SC Branch. A little more pink in the clouds and... Done. Puppy Smiles looked amazed at her new creation. Who said that she couldn't paint a picture with only pink? Pink went with everything. Now she just needed to stick it to the wall with the others, and boom! The window shook for a moment. There was a big red flash outside, making Puppy turn on her tail and stare in curiosity. Fireworks? Boom. Another bright red light flared outside, and a window shattered launching glass shards all around the place. Sharp window fragments rained on the floor, on the desk, and against Puppy's helmet. The foal didn't care. 
Instead, she stuck her head outside to get a better view of what was happening outside. Yay! Fireworks! Luckily, puppy, this was a great show. Past the bridge on the other side of the moat, a lot of ponies were running and playing, throwing fireworks and a lot of other noisy and colored lights at each other. For sure, these robocolts knew how to party hard, and Puppy wanted her share of the fun. The foal headed for the door. She remembered that it was closed. Obviously, this didn't discourage Puppy. She jumped through the window. Landing on the road outside, the filly in yellow hesitated. Leaving behind all those toys and pretty drawings was not easy. But every pony has to make sacrifices in order to follow her goals. What did Soft Air say? One day she would have to make sacrifices and find that not everything was easy. You have to leave something of yours behind if you want to go on. Puppy now knew what the ugly pony was right. And Trigger happy too. But she was a filly on a mission. She wanted to see the fireworks from closer. So, goodbye pretty toys. Oh, and she still had to find Mom. Finding Mom was important too. Go puppy! Day 11. Time approximately 10.15 p.m. Location Ivory Tower, Big 52, SC Ranch. The whole area between the bridge and the main research building entrance had become a battlefield. The four Applejacks Rangers were supporting the attack with their heavy weapons, but the real assault was performed by the Acolytes, protecting only by the light armor and armed with high-caliber weapons like assault rifles and SMGs. When Puppy crossed the bridge, Paladin Goss didn't even notice her immediately, and she slipped past him before he could react. Fuck, what is she doing here? Shower, the ghost's on the field! The Paladin tried following Puppy, but he had to dive behind cover again as a large barrage of bullets hit his position. No can do, if I move, I'm dead. Moreover, Group 2 needs cover. Puppy noticed a young mare lying beside a smoking crater. As the foal approached, she could see the pool of red forming beneath the sleepy pony as it was continuing to glow. Hey, is something wrong, pretty pony? Puppy poked the acolyte, who opened an eye weakly. Please, help me. I, I don't want to die. The soldier's voice was feeble and she couldn't even move. The filly in yellow gently patted the acolyte's mane. Don't worry. Fireworks can be a little scary, but you're a big pony, so you don't have to cry. The dying pony stared up her blankly, not even hearing the foal's comforting words. I don't want to die. She was a young mare, probably a fresh recruit at her first and last battle. There, there. Puppy sat down next to the pony, continuing to stroke her mane. I'm here. Don't worry. There's nothing to be scared of. When the fireworks end, we'll go and buy cotton candy, okie dokie. The first time Puppy saw fireworks, she was scared too. But Mom bought her cotton candy and she stopped sobbing. It must have worked, even with this pony, because she stopped whimpering and now she was simply crying. A couple of bullets hit Puppy in the torso while she sat beside the mare, but she hardly noticed. Mom. Sorry. Why I ran away? The acolyte's dying words were barely a whisper as her last breast breath left her lips. Ah, uh, don't worry, Miss Pretty Pony. Moms are good and nice. She'll be happy to see you again, even if you ran away. Ah, uh, maybe she'll scold you, but I'm sure she cares. The dead pony didn't reply, so Puppy tried poking her. Ah, uh, are you all right, Miss Pretty Pony? Ah, uh, Mr. Pony, is this pony all right? Analyzing. Negative. Applejack's ranger acolyte, condition deceased. Puppy frowned. No, oh, like Henry's dad. Finally, Puppy seemed to catch up with the situation. Hey, Mr. Voice, are these ponies playing or fighting? The ponies in the area were fighting, though none of them are marked as hostile towards you. Only point defenses are marked as enemies. To reinforce the suit's words with a couple of bullets hit near Puppy's position, and one partially cracked her helmet. Warning! Breach in the containment layer. Repair talisman activated. Hostile count, two. Hey! Look where you point those things! Puppy stood on her hooves, 
Leaving the dead pony and trotting towards the nearest group of acolytes who had found shelter behind an upturned car. Stop fighting! It's dangerous! Your friend's very ill! One of the three soldiers stared at the filly in yellow. What the fuck are you doing here, filly? Find some cover! The ghost tilted her head, confused. Why? Exactly at that moment, a spray of bullets hit Puppy's flank, leaving a thin trail of pink when the bullets pierced her body as if she had been made of butter. The acolytes stared at the scene in horror. When Puppy simply yelled at the tourists to stop being a bully, they seemed speechless. The trio of soldiers didn't even react when the foal lost it and galloped towards the Steel Ranger's most advanced defensive position. Stop that! It's dangerous! Stupid bullies! Can't you say everybody is scared here? The filly charged directly towards the main building entrance, where a couple of Steel Rangers were shooting at the assailing forces. One of the rangers turned towards the filly and shot her with a grenade launcher, sending her flying over to the other side of the battlefield. Puppy took a minute to recover from the explosion, and in the meantime, Paladin Cold Shower managed to reach her. What the hell are you doing here, Puppy? Go back to the school building. Puppy sat down, shaking her head. No, I don't like ponies arguing with each other. Ponies should be pretty and nice, not mean and violent. The Paladin cocked her head. This is war, Puppy. You can't stop it by just whining. We'll handle this one. Don't worry and run back to the school. It's too dangerous here. Ah, there's no war that Space Captain Andromeda can't stop. The fool lifted one hoof and stated, Laser gun! It floated out in front of her. Shower tried grabbing Puppy, but a burst of bullets forced her to get back into cover. Put away that toy gun and come with me, Puppy. Are you listening to me? Puppy? The filly galloped into the middle of the battlefield, grabbing the gun with both her hooves and pointing it at the ponies defending the main building entrance. Stop fighting and surrender, or I'll shoot you! You are bad ponies, and you should feel bad! A turret hit Puppy in the leg and in the belly while the rangers ignored them. A cold shower desperately looked for an opening in the barrage to dart in and grab the foal. Okie dokie loki! Space Captain Andromeda, to the stars and beyond! The fool dived to the ground as if she was dodging invisible laser rays, pointing her own toy gun, before saying a single word. Bang. Like, half a dozen times. Bang, 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 bang! Surrender now, stupid zebra aliens! Target 1 to 7 acquired. Opening communication bridge to Pony Medes through Com Station 2. Pony Medes status. Restored and functional. Relaying coordinates. The window on the third story of the central building exploded from the inside, and a griffin flew out of it, firing a pistol back into the room. The griffin's appearance on the battlefield completely gained Puppy's attention. Podimedes. One, four, five, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve are ready to fire. Podimedes two, three, six, seven, and eight have target beyond their horizon. Relocating for indirect fire. Estimated time, 30 seconds. Henry! Henry! I'm here! Make these ponies stop fighting, please! Hey, Henry! Henry! Puppy tried to gallop after the griffin, with the gun still in one hoof, and a turret stubbornly firing at her. Wait! Stupid chicken. That girl always needed some help to notice things. Puppy put away the gun and took a chunk of asphalt from the ground, taking aim and... Bullseye. The griffin lost control of her trajectory and landed, well, crashed, not far away from the filly. In the darkness of the night, Pony Medes opened its eyes. Half a dozen red lines pointed at the roof of the base's main building. At first, there were only pale, thin crimson lines moving randomly in the area but they grew to intensity until you could see them even from the other side of the bridge. Like red laser beams, they appeared from the clouds, piercing the gray curtain and coloring it with a faint red shadow, even small pillars of light connecting ivory tower to the heavens and beyond. Evacuate the area! All ponies, leave your positions and retreat! Enhanced with magic, Skold's voice thundered above the explosions. Every acolyte began falling back, following Skold's order, leaving their cover and running toward the bridge. 
The rangers defending the central building seemed confused and held their fire as they watched the retreating forces. Fuck, puppy! Why did you throw a stone at me this time? Henrietta was rubbing her head, still trying to work out what had happened. What's the old mummy screaming about? Puppy shrugged and hugged her friend. Don't know, but I wanted to tell them to stop being mean. Only it seems that they already stopped. All weapons ready to fire. Target is locked. Commencing full-scale attack in ten. Nine. Footnote. Level up. Twelve. New perk added. Little scoundrel. No puppy, give it back. You're less likely to get caught when stealing. In addition, you can access an NPC's inventory during dialogues if you are facing them.